you change the archetype of ballerinas as being white and really change that stereotype. Um, but it sounds like it was not easy. I saw the interview when you talked about being asked to lighten your skin, which seems just impossibly horrifying to hear that. Um, what's so impressive to me about these experiences that you've had is that you've decided to fight them publicly. You've talked about this publicly. You did a video on TikTok, which was viewed by millions of people, where you're painting your point shoes to match your skin with, with makeup. And, and you've been advocating for new point shoe emojis um, to, to change the conversation. What made you decide to take on the responsibility of having these conversations in, mm -hmm. in public? I felt like there's no other way to exist within this world of ballet without doing that. I feel so fortunate to have been in the position that I'm in and have the platforms that I have because so many generations that have come before me did not have that access and opportunity. So I've always looked at my this experience is as a responsibility, a responsibility to speak about my experiences, a responsibility to tell the stories of so many who have come before me um, that you know their, their stories aren't documented in history books. And so it feels easy um, to, to do this. I, if, I, if I couldn't speak and be honest, I don't think I could truly be the artist that I am. Do you feel the dance world changing around you? <laughs> yes, I'm going to say yes. I would say, you know, I've been a part of, the as a professional, I've been, you know, at American Ballet Theater for almost 25 years, and um, I have seen change. I would say the most change I've seen has been in the last five years. Um, you know, the pandemic and, you know, the uprise of Black Lives Matter and George Floyd, I never thought actually in my lifetime that I would see as much change as I, as I have, even though it's been so small. Um, but I am hopeful. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be able to continue to do the work that I'm doing, um, both like internally and externally, uh, you know, of the ballet world. What's amazing is how many different things you do. You're dancing, that's a full-time job, but you also have a foundation. And I want to get into the businesses separately, but tell us a little bit about what you're working on in the foundation right now. Yeah, you know, because of the way that I came into the ballet world, it's always been in the back of my mind that I wanted to pay it forward in some way. I mean, I've been a part of a lot of different organizations that are doing work through the arts and through dance, and I've been an ambassador for the Boys and Girls Club for over a decade. Uh, but I wanted to find a way to bring ballet to as many people as I can, give them access and, and hope. And so through the, the Misty Copeland Foundation was founded three years ago and our signature program um, we started two years ago and it's called Be Bold. It stands for Ballet Explorations. Ballet offers leadership development and it's bigger than ballet. You know, we're, right now we're starting out in, in New York City. Um, we're at 14 different community sites. It's a free after school ballet class. So right now we're in the Bronx and in Harlem um, and we're reaching over 250 kids already. But it's, it's introducing ballet to them in a way that uh, works for them and within their community. So it's not taking this white European art form and bringing it to the Bronx and saying like, kids, like connect with this. Um, you know, we've created our own curriculum. We have uh, two teaching artists in every class. We have a live musician in every class. And it's not just classical piano music. It's every instru live instrument you can possibly think of. Um, and getting them to understand that the technique is there to tell a story and for them to find joy and community within it.